Thank you very much. It's uh, exciting to be here. And it was fun listening to Jim talk about the ARM processor. You heard about Apple Computer, and one of the early processors that I worked on at Apple was the ARM Acorn, which is one of the very first ARM processors. It was a, quite an interesting processor at the time because it was very efficient, had a great instruction set, and you programmed it in Assembler. So I like to say my second language is English, my first language is Assembler. Uh, so, uh, are we going to do some demonstrations? Yes, we are. Okay, very good. So Drew, who's uh, going to help in this presentation, is going to show some demonstrations of the various products that you've heard about, as well as the data services in our exchange. Data services are applications that are going to operate on the data from the connected device, whether they're ARM or other, other um, microprocessors that are c connected and producing data. And while he's setting that up, I also wanted to mention Atmel. Uh, it wasn't mentioned earlier, but perhaps you know, Arduino, which is a very popular hacker board, and probably several of you that raised your hands as developers have played with Arduino. That is an Atmel processor, and some of the larger at Arduinos are ARM cores and an Atmel processor kind of puts that together. And then the Arduino has made it easy because they've got a sketch or an able uh, language that allows you to develop really rapidly a, a proof of concept. And then what you heard from Nigel is the concept of connecting that device to some platform that can manage that device and the connected connectivity of the device. So as M2M or IoT matures, it's not just about one or two devices. It's about how do I get a, an ecosystem of devices that are uh, communicating to back end, whether it be private for industrial applications or healthcare or the internet and cloud of services. And we're going to show some cloud of services. So Wadio was founded looking at the ecosystem and where there is something that was missing. We certainly had lots of companies that are doing device management. I think what ARM's doing is interesting. It's, it's a chip core licensee but they've invested in Jim's company that does uh, device management. So what Arm is saying here is, listen, if you want to get your product to market, you're going to have to figure out how to do device management. And instead of you having to figure it out on your own, why don't you come to us? We've already figured it out for you. If you're a part of our Arm ecosystem, uh, you've adopted the embed um, technology stack, it's good to go. And then what Radio has done is we've integrated the Arm embed device server into the data service exchange so if you're building a device with the ARM and using the embed ecosystem, we're good to go. The data from those devices is available to other applications. Now we're agnostic. We play around with lots of different device management platforms. So perhaps you're an enterprise. Uh, I know there's someone from Honeywell here. You've got a Honeywell device management platform for thermostats and HVAC systems. It's not the ARM embed device server, so we integrate third-party device management platforms. We have Nest as a uh, integrated into our platform. Actually, Drew has got an interesting story. He's an engineer. Uh, he did some of the very early work in, in Wadio. He's going through an evolution right now. He said, I want to be a part of the business strategy for Wadio. So we're now seeing him evolve from an engineer into uh, the business side of the organization. Um, we also um, have integrated stream technologies uh, platform, as you just heard, into our environment. And like, stream technologies, is, like Nigel said, it's been around for quite a long time and they've evolved as the industry's evolved and they've found an interesting place to be in dealing with a lot of the different kinds of connectivity. You've got SIM-based mobile connectivity, you have satellite connectivity, uh, IP both wired and Wi-Fi and the various um, radio protocols that were mentioned. And Nigel's company uh, has uh, found a way to create a platform that allows us to make that easier for those that are, have devices in the market to communicate that data back into a system like Wadio. Um, and once it's in Wadio, then we have the data services, other than the device management platforms. We have big data storage, analytics, reporting, machine learning, Scripting, you're going to hear uh, about a really interesting scripting engine after us that's in our, in our exchange. Uh, so most organizations need to store the data, operate on the data, do some anal analytics on it, uh, do dashboards and reporting. And up to today, 
that's been something that a group of engineers have had to figure out how to put that together. So what Wadio has done is we've pre-integrated a large number of applications. We've got 100 now in our data service exchange, and we add about three or four a month. Uh, and they are wide range from very complex uh, application stacks like Pentaho or JReport for analytics and reporting or ThingWorks you mentioned earlier which is a full application annual platform which we're going to demonstrate uh, down to uh, something that would be um, like a web service like Twitter or Dropbox. So we've got a hundred of these that are pre-integrated that can operate on the data from those connected device platforms. Complicated story, perhaps, but for you going to market, it makes it easy. It's a fast track to uh, putting your product in the market and then adding value to it. And with that, I think we might be set up. Pretty much. You're good? All right. So let's show the, show the Mobile World Congress chart with the... Like this. Yes. Here you go. So this is similar to a chart that Nigel threw up, and we're going to demonstrate some of the parts of this block diagram. On the left-hand side, you'll see we have devices. These happen to be ARM embed devices or devices that are supporting the ARM ecosystem. And they'll connect into the access and connectivity environment, which you heard from Nigel. We have that integrated into Wadio, which uh, manages and deploys these services on your behalf. Uh, we have the ARM embed device server, which is, as you heard from Jim, is dealing with device management security, which is very important, uh, up into APIs, into applications, and then data into Wadio, which is a, uh, Wadio is a message bus architecture, pub sub, allows you to publish the data and then have any number of data services subscribe to it. Like I said, we've integrated quite a few. You're, you're gonna see ThingWorks today? Thingworks. Yeah, ThingWorks is, one of our newest data services, one of the largest. Um, as Nigel mentioned, it was purchased by PTC, roughly $120 million uh, acquisition last year. Um, PTC also then acquired uh, Exceda, roughly $150, $170 million, I think. And then uh, they just acquired another Internet of Things company for machine learning in that same range. So the PTC is making a major investment. It's a company to watch. So we've uh, enabled ThingWorks. We can deploy it. We were at a uh, um, hackathon for ThingWorks at the LiveWorks uh, show. We deployed 85 ThingWorks instances on demand. Took about 20 minutes. Took about 20 minutes to deploy those. Up and operational, no issues whatsoever. A lot of the, the developers to have their fun. Um, I enjoyed that because then Steve Wozniak gave the awards and it was nice to see uh, the Woz again from the Apple days. Uh, and with a few of the few of the other data services, why don't we walk through the, the data services? I'm going to let you describe what it is that we're doing. Okay, is that good? All right, thank you, Tom. Um, you basically took away half my presentation by speaking about audio, so now I'm left with uh, just a demo. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, like you said, I'm, you know, just moving to the business side of Wadio. So if I start geeking out and some of you guys don't know what I'm talking about, just yell at me uh, and I'll, I'll come back to reality. Uh, so uh, going back to the graph, you know, the first, uh, the first application, I guess, to call it in the stream of data here is uh, StreamTech, uh, which, you know, Nigel gave a very good description of uh, earlier for you guys. Uh, so here in this demo, we have it handling connectivity to all the devices. And you can see in the graphs here of the data usage coming in, uh, we have these devices, by the way, this is an entirely live demo. Uh, these devices from Multitech and Ublocks, they are currently on trucks in London and driving around. Uh, so they're sending GPS data and accelerometer data into uh, our system via StreamTech and ARM Embed Design Server. Uh, and then we've routed it to these other data services. So, as Stream here providing the connectivity, they have a whole bunch of features that let you manage this data uh, and manage the connections, manage the devices. Uh, but then they come here into ARM Embed. And uh, we actually have, this is a, a slightly older version. This is a nice beta version. So uh, Jim, if you could hook us up with your engineers and we can get a nice better presentation for you guys, uh, we'd definitely appreciate that. <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, you can see just how many devices are here connected right now. And all of them, which protocol they're using, these are all CoAP and UDP. Um, so it's a, these are all supports basically all the common protocols for uh, you know, M2M and IoT uh, pro uh, setups. So the first uh, thing we have here is ThingWorks. Uh, like Tom mentioned, uh, they had the hackathon last week and they have the LiveWorks, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, conference. Yeah, they had the LiveWorks conference going. And so uh, they, they provide basically what they, what they like to call application enablement. So it's kind of like a, almost, a, it's a platform or a framework or you, know, you can call it many different things, but what it does is it lets you create your own custom application to, to run on, you know, to do whatever you're trying to do. Uh, and here we have, we're showing the historical path that all of these trucks have been taking throughout the day. So I can click here on the vehicles and it will load and you can see the vehicle where they are currently. So we can click on, let's say this one here and go back to the details. And then you can see the path that it's taken throughout the day. So, you know, for if this would, uh, if there was an actual company doing this, they would go through and they could see what their drivers are doing, where they're going, you know, just fleet tracking and fleet management application. Uh, so then on top of this, we also have uh, another, one of the other uh, data service providers we have is JReport. So JReport lets you put, give reporting on all of your uh, data. Uh, so these things, one of the great things we have in our integrations is that all of the integrations are bi-directional. So we can actually take these reports as widgets and plug them back into ThingWorks or whatever other provider you have and visualize them there. And so uh, this, this way you can get a lot more power about all that integration because this is, this is typically what you would do as a developer, right? You, you don't wanna just have one service running in isolation. You want them all to work together so that they can all provide you your much, uh, your much more comprehensive solution. Uh, then one of the other services here we also have is Scripter. Scripter is really one great um, web API uh, platform, I guess. Uh, but I'm not gonna demo this to you because we actually have Rabia here, which is the CEO of Scripter. Uh, so he'll, he can tell you about it a lot better than I can, that's for sure. So uh, Rabia, if you wanna come up and talk about it. Yeah. We just have to wait for the computer to restart. So, uh, I mean, we talked about uh, little data becoming big data in, in IoT. So eventually we have a lot of sensors, a lot of, uh, a lot of devices that are going to be sending that data to the cloud it's going to become big data, somebody's going to look at it and take some actions. But in that transition, sometimes in the cloud we have to take dynamic decisions uh, for what to do with that data before it becomes big data. We have to apply business rules, run orchestrations with other data, so with other web services. And that's where Scripter becomes uh, uh, valuable. Uh, we're in? All right. So I think it's easier to uh, to explain this live, so I'm going to log in. Um, simply, Scripter provides you with the ability to write a script in, in JavaScript for now, but we will support other languages in the future. Uh, that will run in, into our cloud infrastructure. This script will be invoked by your IoT platform, so probably the gateway, and sometimes the device itself, sometimes a platform, uh, like what? We're, uh, that's, uh, the, uh, we're integrated into the Watt Data Service Exchange. So in this particular very simple application, I'm going to uh, zoom in. Uh, we can imagine a scenario where we have a, uh, a, a IoT device that is attached to a temperature sensor, and I want something to happen uh, at every temperature reading. So the device is reading the temperature, sending it to the internet by calling this API that we just created. So once you write the JavaScript, it becomes a secure uh, API that is invocable by the gateway or the IoT device. And here I'm saying if the temperature, if the, re if the request parameter that I got, temperature is higher than minus eight, email the manager telling it's getting hot in here. And if this reading is higher than the last reading, just send an alert. 
and save the reading so I can compare with it later. See, I've done this without a complex database statements. This is, this is another feature of the platform. That's, this is very simple. This is, this is, so before the small data becomes big data, you need a lot of those to, to filter your data, take decisions, take actions. Uh, as another, another way to do it, as I said, we're, we'll be integrating uh, additional uh, scripting platforms. Uh, we've integrated something fun. Uh, this is, if you're familiar with it, it's a, it's a Google project called Blockly. It allows you to, actually this does almost the same as the script that I've shown you, but it's graphic. You just drag and drop. This is uh, for people that are not familiar with the syntax. You cannot make syntax errors writing your, uh, your API with Blockly. It simplifies, this is, uh, I mean, it's an interesting educational tool, but imagine the power. You're, you're just dragging and dropping visual elements and getting an API. This is interesting for business managers to, uh, to create orchestrations quickly. So developers can create complex libraries and complex orchestrations and business managers can assemble them or change the rules in a way that is simple for them to use. Um, now this is an IDE in the browser. So all you have to do is register to, uh, to Scripter. You'll get an IDE in the browser where you can, where you can develop. Uh, you can also use your, I mean for, for, the, for the developers amongst the, the crowd, you can use your own IDEs. It's integrated you, uh, with, source code, with, with GitHub for source code control. Uh, you can run, we'll, we'll do a, s a small demo. So you can click on run and you see the output at the, at the bottom of the, of the screen and it'll show you also the curl statement that you would use to, to invoke that web service. Additionally, Uh, also to simplify it for developers, let's say you're using Raspberry Pi to, uh, uh, I mean you're, you're creating a Raspberry Pi application, you just copy the code from here and you paste it into your Raspberry Pi IDE. And this is what, this is the SDK practically. We're su we support all major IoT platforms. Uh, the latest, the last, the last detail I want to show you, so Scripter, So I, I talked about how big data becomes, uh, small data becomes big data. So this is an example. Uh, this is data coming from automotive or whatever. It's gonna go through multiple stages. Uh, what, we, what we also enable is the integration of Scripter into, into other systems. So in this case, the data that is coming from automotive application arrives at a stage where the the, the people that are controlling this application can write the dynamic business rules. Uh, that will drive the solution, you know, before, before it goes to a, actually to a, to a watt.io queue into the, un, into the final system that's going to consume that information, which is actually, in this case, an IBM asset management system. So, any questions? As Node-RED, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't want to. I don't want to say something I'm not sure about. Yeah. It's in Bloomix. It's in Bloomix. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into it. I'm, I'm not sure. No, this is a service. So yeah, maybe that wasn't clear. So Scripter is a cloud service. You can subscribe to it just from the website and use it. It's free for prototyping and small-scale applications. And as as the solution grows, we have paying tiers. We also can implement behind the uh, uh, on-premise. Uh, it, it's not, no, it's a service. Is it uh, FlopSub based or get push? Uh, excuse me? Uh, what, is it FlopSub? Uh, uh, yeah, well, we have, uh, well, we have a, uh, w a normal HTTP, uh, get, oh. post, etc. And there's a WebSockets, uh, I mean, and you can invoke the service using WebSockets. And so we have a web, we have a PubSub uh, 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 protocol for that. Yeah. And, uh, uh, one, one final thing, uh, so, so what you've seen here is just the, uh, sorry, what you've seen, this is the surface. At the surface we're a scripting engine so you can write your uh, 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 business rules and orchestrations, but underneath the surface 
A scripter provides a NoSQL database, provides content management and digital asset man an API to do content management and digital asset management, provides push notifications, real-time communication, uh, uh, messaging, and, uh, and, and a slew of other APIs that will make it easier for the developer to, uh, to create the, uh, the IoT application. Any other questions? Thank you.